What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So we've already built out our controllers, got our controllers figured out. We will have to change them in the future, but they're looking good for right now. We've got our repository set up. Now what we need to focus on is the actual services. So an important thing to really realize about services is that all of those methods that we used in the JPA repository, like find all, um, find all by ID, all of those database, database methods, we need to bring them into our services because our services are going to allow us to create methods like get Pokemon or um, create Pokemon. We're going to have a create Pokemon method. That's actually what we're about to create here in a second. And you need these methods in here because this is where you will insert things like find all, um, like these uh, repository methods right here, essentially. You essentially put your repository methods inside of your get Pokemon methods because it creates what's called another layer of abstractions. And by the end of this video, we will understand what auto-wired is. We will understand what dependency injection is. And hopefully it will finally, quote, really in reality and figuratively bridge the gap so that you understand how this whole data act flow actually occurs. Okay, so let's actually go inside IntelliJ and let's create our very first service package where we will put our services. So first thing, you would think that you're going to create a service class, but really what you want to do is you want to create a Pokemon service interface. And this interface may seem like an unnecessary step, but this interface is what's going to allow us to take the service and bring it into the controllers in a way that does not depend on the other one, AKA dependency injection. So we're taking, now we're creating the service class or we're creating the service interface right now, but once we actually get done with the service class, that interface, like I said, is going to allow us to put it inside of the controllers. And because the repository is an interface too, we will quickly be able to put our repository within our service here in just a second. But first thing that we need to do is we actually need to go in here and we're going to create our very first um, actual method in here. And it's going to be a Pokemon DTO, which we are going to have to create. So we go in here and we're going to say create Pokemon and then our Pokemon, we are going to have it so that we pass in our Pokemon DTO, just like this. So we got Pokemon DTO, but we can't actually bring it in because we don't have it. So first thing that we need to do is we need to create a DTO folder. So if you don't know what a DTO is, whenever you return data back or whenever you are pushing data to your actual API, you don't want to a lot of times make it so that all of these values are in here. There may be cases when you don't want the int ID or you don't want the primary key. There, be, there may be cases when you don't want the name. And basically, all that a DTO is, is it's a model without all of these values so that you can either submit data, submit data in a secure fashion or you can return data in a secure fashion because you may not want all of these values returned. So that is why we actually create DTOs. And I'm going to just go in here and I'm going to call this Pokemon DTO. So we're going to go Pokemon DTO just like this. And the values that we are going to put within our DTO are not going to be hardly any different from the, actually they're not going to be different at all than the actual values. This will change in the future, um, but for right now, we're just going to have it so that we've got a private int ID right here, private string, and we're going to have name, we're going to have private string description just like this, and we will have private string, or uh, these are actually different. I'm just going to go content. Actually, what are the values that I had? I might just be, yeah, I can just copy them. So I'm just gonna copy them since they're exactly the same, and I'm going to put them in here. So go back here. Now we have our Pokemon DTO, 
we can actually bring it in just like this. So now what we want to do is we want to create what's, at, what's called an implementation, also known as an impl. So we'll go in here and within the actual service folder, you could call this whatever you want to. You don't have to do the folder structure like I do. You can do it any way that you want to, but I just call it an impl. I put it within the service file and then I'm going to go into here and I'm actually going to create my Pokemon service, impl. We also need to make sure that we put impl on the end as well too, because you need to distinguish them because if they're that close to each other in a file like that, you don't name them something else that's only going to lead to disaster. So next thing that we need to do is we need to actually implement this Pokemon service. So what I'm going to do is since it's an, uh, an actual service, you need to go up here, you need to add your service so that Spring can register this and knows it's there and can actually bring in all your beans. Then I'm going to go into here and I'm going to implement the actual Pokemon service. So I'm gonna go here and let me see. I think I've got, oh, need to go ahead and I need to put the implement. So go here and go implements just like this. And we still get a red squiggly line because we need to go over to here and we need to actually implement this method. So first thing, okay, this is where we start talking about auto wired. So if you look at the repository, like we have this repository over here and you need to bring this repository in via the interface into your Pokemon service. And the way that we do that is first, we have our Pokemon repository. So we go in here, we have Pokemon repository. And we're gonna go down just like this. And then what you want to do is you want to right click, you want to generate. And this is the way that I do it. And this is kind of the official way you could, um, a lot of people just do this. They just put auto wired above just like that. I wouldn't recommend it though, because if you want to go back and you want to unit test this down the line, you're probably not going to be able to without a lot of finagling or doing things that are, you know, quote unquote sketchy, not that sketchy, but you get what I'm saying. But you want to use auto wired on your actual constructor because it's the official way of doing it. And it's the way that you can actually implement your test. Okay, so we've got that. Now what we want to do is we want to actually implement this create Pokemon method so that we can send data to the actual server. And the way that we do that, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go Pokemon is equal to new Pokemon. That is going to new up, once again, new Pokemon for us. Then we're gonna go in here. And what we're doing is we're going to map this. So you can use actual frameworks like MapStruct and Model Mapper to do this, but I actually think that most, most places that you work at are not going to use mappers. So if I were you, I would just get used to just mapping stuff yourself because I've never seen anybody use a mapper in real life or an actual um, production environment. And I think it's easier in the long run. You use mapper, it can, save you some time, but a lot of times it will, it just causes um, unnecessary complexity. So if you just bite the bullet in the beginning and just map it yourself, it's a lot easier, I think. So we're gonna go in here. Then we're going to actually access our save. And because we impl or because we actually have our Pokemon repository, we don't have to worry about any of this database stuff. We can just literally say, hey, Go ahead, throw this in the database and we are good to go. So we're gonna go down here. Now we have our Pokemon DTO. I'm gonna go Pokemon response, just like this. And I'm going to say this new Pokemon response is equal to, now we need to new up a new DT, we need to new up this Pokemon DTO. And um, here in a second, we will actually write methods that will make it so that a lot of this stuff is we just have a method to do all of this, but for right now, let's just do it manually. So we'll go down here, we'll go set ID, and we'll set this new ID to new Pokemon dot get ID, Pokemon response dot, and we're going to set the name, and we're gonna go here. So new Pokemon dot get name, Pokemon response, and it's going to be same thing. So we're gonna go set type, 
and the new type is going to be new Pokemon dot get type return Pokemon response. So go down here. Okay, we're not out of the woods just yet. We did just create our very first Pokemon service, but now comes the very last part where we take this service and we inject it into our controllers. So we have a straight shot to the database. We can create a Pokemon and we'll test it and we'll have a straight shot to our actual database. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into my controllers up here and it's going to be really easy. Once you get the actual service built, now it just depends on injecting it into the actual controller. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and we're going to actually bring in our Pokemon service with auto wired. So go in here, so Pokemon service, then we go Pokemon service, and we go down here, we're gonna go constructor, so we go here, it's gonna generate our constructor just like this, it's gonna do everything for us. So we go down here, we go auto wired, and it's going to automatically do all of that work for us. Okay, so let's, uh, we can do, we just need to create a Pokemon first. I think just creating a Pokemon will be good for now and then we can start doing the rest of the actions in the next video so let's just go ahead here and let's go ahead bring in our method and see what happens so we're gonna i'm gonna go here i'm gonna go new response entity and i'm gonna go pokemon dot service dot create pokemon and i'm gonna go pokemon need to change we need to change this to pokemon dto and the good thing about a dto is that you can also change it too if you don't want uh, the user to be able to send up all the data, like maybe you don't want them to send up the type, you could also change it because now it's a DTO and it's not connected to the model. So we go down here, we're gonna go Pokemon DTO, and then we are going to pass that in and we need to return a response status. So go down here and there we go. And also this needs to be the actual Pokemon DTO because that's what we're returning. Okay, so let's go ahead, moment of truth. Let's fire this thing up and see what happens. And let's also go in and create a collection for our Postman. So I've already actually got one created and I'm going to go into here and I'm just gonna call this, um, let me see. Hmm, what's another? Uh, Diglett. Diglett was a good Pokemon. <laughs> These are all terrible for Pokemon, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's go here. We're going to post, let's see, moment of truth. And Diglett has been created. We are ready to go. We've just bridged the gap. Now we can go in and start creating and actually building out the rest of our services now that we know that we've got something that will actually store in the database. Let's also look in the database, make sure we've got stuff in there. So if you wanna check the database, what you do is you go to edit data and we've got our Diglett in there as well too. Our identity is working. As you notice, we didn't have to actually input our ID because identity does it for us. We are ready to rock. Anyway, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.